Hi all and welcome to episode 41 of Plain Speaking Sanjeev. Some of you may notice I've cut my hair, so I feel almost human, which is a great change, very positive. Anyhow, so coming back to the episode, today I want to talk about how decision making, fundamental decision making uh, requires good data, good analytics and a good set of inputs and assumptions, otherwise you may end up with the wrong answers. And I'm going to use examples from my career in aviation, both as part of airline management, also as a part of an aviation consultant. So these examples will be drawn over the next few episodes over you know multiple airlines over the last 20 years. Today I'll talk about uh, two examples that are taken from two different airlines about how uh, suboptimal or in some cases incorrect decisions were being made because we didn't have the right data or the right analytics to make the decisions. The two examples from network planning are one from a major European airline and second is from a major Southeast Asian airline. The first, the first example from the major European airline, and I have to read from my screen so please bear with me, is that the airline did not know how to properly measure the contribution of a given route to the overall network. So it did not know how to measure network contribution. It would measure the performance of every route on a standalone basis. And if the route was negative, they would put it on the list for potentially cutting. And if the route was positive, they would, it would be considered a good route and obviously they wouldn't they would cut it. But what they could not or what they were not accounting for is what the so-called less positive route or, or the not good route, what it is contributing to the positive routes. What is the network contribution of one route to the other? In fact, they were recommending certain cuts or making certain cuts where a short route would, uh, would be showing as negative, but it would be feeding a number of the long-haul routes and making the long-haul routes very positive. And because of the way they allocated revenues and costs, they would end up uh, you know, burdening the short route with too much of the cost or too little of the revenue, and then recommend a cut to the short route without having a way to see how it would impact the longer routes. So when this was when I was a consultant, so when we went into this airline and we looked, saw how they were making their network decisions, we had to make two changes. Number one, we had to change how they were allocating costs and revenues to each route so that we were fairly, fairly accounting for the, uh, uh, for the value potential or for the contribution of the route. And we had to put together a framework to decide, uh, to determine how much each route was contributing to other routes. And this in fact uh, resulted in us saving a few short routes from being cut that would have actually created a huge negative impact on the entire network because they were very important feeder routes. But because again of the way costs and revenues were being allocated, those short routes were getting too little of the revenue, too much of the cost, and uh, therefore were being perceived far more negative than they were. So again, uh, how you measure network contribution is, a, is of extreme importance when making airline network decisions. The second example is from a Southeast Asian airline, which is it's really related to the first, where they did not allocate uh, aircraft and overhead costs in the appropriate manner to different routes and ended up burdening some routes with too much of the costs or unnecessarily burdening some routes with any of the aircraft costs uh, when they should have used a different approach. Let me give an example of this. Suppose an aircraft is flying you know, 12 hours a day and it is parked at night. That aircraft is already there. It is already a sunk cost. Your aircraft is paid for regardless of you know, what it does at night. So the right decision framework for this aircraft is if you can fly a route at night rather than having the aircraft stay you know, idle overnight, you can fly a you know, two-hour route or three-hour route at night and ensure that the route covers the variable cost of operating the flight then you should operate it because it then crea uh, contributes towards the fixed costs and it increases your revenues and increases your cash uh, as long as it covers variable cost. However, if you have a system which insists on burdening every route with the aircraft cost, then the night flight may come out as negative because now it is being forced to take the cost of the aircraft uh, and, uh, and then you know, when you do the math it says you, you, you're not going to make money on this. The argument that we put forward to this Southeast Asian airline was that, look, your aircraft is otherwise going to stay idle. The cost of the aircraft has to be borne by the core routes which are operating the aircraft uh, during the day. If at night it's sitting idle and you can find a way to fly it to cover the variable cost, don't add aircraft cost to it unless it is the variable portion of the aircraft cost. Do not uh, add fixed aircraft or overhead cost to this route because this flight, additional flight at night, is actually uh, cash positive 
and contributes towards fixed costs and we should be flying it. And just because of an accounting principle, don't uh, make the decision to not fly these routes. So that was a very fundamental change to their approach because what we basically told them to do, which they never done before, was group routes into two categories. One was your core routes, which had to pay for the aircraft in the, in the overheads. That was the network around which the airline is fundamentally built. And the second was so-called filler routes, these, these short night flights, which has added supplementary revenue and covered variable cost, but they, they should not be burdened with the cost of the aircraft and overheads. It was a very fundamental philosophical change in the way people looked at uh, you know, cost accounting uh, for aircraft or for network decisions. And I can tell you that it's not a very common or popular uh, method of doing it. Most airlines of the world would give you 10 reasons why they should not do it. But for this one airline, they adopted what we had suggested, and it actually resulted in greater contribution and higher profitability for the airline uh, by just using the right metrics or the logical metrics to make these decisions. So again, hopefully uh, these two examples were useful to you, maybe too technical for some of you, but you know, I have a mixed audience. Some people enjoy the personal stories, you know, anecdotes, etc. Some people enjoy uh, some of these technical stories like the one today. And uh, I have to mix it up to make sure that everybody has something that they enjoy from time to time. So for those of you for whom this was too technical, I apologize. I will be back with less technical stories eventually. But for the next few days, I will just be sharing one or two examples from my experience of how decisions are made both on, both on the revenue side and the cost side and how tweaks to the decision-making philosophy can result in better decisions. Hope that was interesting. See you again tomorrow. Thanks.